If you leave a like on this video right now and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'll give you my mom's credit card so that you guys can open up all the Duel Links packs you want. What's up everybody, Watt007 here and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video. In today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video, I'm going to give you guys a ton of recommendations of what you can spend your SR Dream ticket on. Sorry for being a day late on covering this video, I recently went back to work so that's why I didn't make a video on this right away, but without further ado, let's go hop into it. So if any of you guys watched my UR Dream ticket video, a lot of the rules that I'm about to mention right now are the exact same for the SR Dream Ticket. Basically, if you guys do not know what you want to spend your SR Dream Ticket on, feel free to save your SR Dream Ticket until it's about to expire. If you legitimately just do not know what to spend it on, just save it. You never know when in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links releases a bunch of new cards through a new box, and maybe some of those cards combo with a bunch of old boxes, and due to that, you might need a couple cards from these old boxes to utilize the deck, and instead of wasting a bunch of money and gems to get one copy of those certain cards, you can just save your SR Dream Ticket and then utilize your SR Dream Ticket to get the card that you need. For this SR Dream Ticket, it doesn't expire until November 30th of 2020, so feel free to save it. And another thing too, when it comes to the Dream Ticket, do not waste the Dream Ticket on anything except for box cards or structure deck cards, but still go for box cards, especially if you're willing to drop some money in Duel Links. If you're, if you're willing to drop money on Duel Links, do not waste your Dream Ticket on the structure decks because structure decks give you guaranteed cards compared to boxes, but if you're like a pure free-to-play player that refuses to spend money on the game then yeah you could consider utilizing the dream ticket to get structured at cards what's also cool is that recently konami added a feature that should have been here a lot earlier but i'm glad they did it now where you can actually sort the cards for boxes so when picking a card that you want, you can now sort it to box and structure deck cards and pick from there. Because with the Dream Tickets, they actually have access to pretty much every card in the game that's either an SR card or that is an SR card if you're using an SR Dream Ticket. And now you can sort it by boxes. I wish this was something in the UR Dream Ticket video, but they didn't add this feature until the game officially updated. But it's still really cool to see that they finally added this feature right here because this was long overdue. So for the first part of this SR Dream Ticket video, these recommendations I'm going to recommend to you guys are a bunch of cards that are very generic and can be put in any single deck. Later in the video, I'll mention a lot of cards that are very powerful in just one single deck, but for now, I'm going to talk about cards that are super powerful in any deck that you throw them in. And first things first, big shout out to Treacherous Trap Hole. Treacherous Trap Hole is a very powerful card that states, if you have no trap cards in your graveyard, you can target two monsters on the field and destroy those targets. With one single card, you get to pop two monsters, and therefore, that's a plus one, and there's a reason why this card has been on the semi-limit list for a very long time. So you guys could spend one of your SR Dream Tickets on Treacherous Chapel, and then for the other Limit 2 card to add it to your deck, you can add Enemy Controller if you started off with zero copies of Treacherous Chapel. So Treacherous Chapel is a very, very powerful card. Next up, when it comes to spells, one of the best cards to get with your SR Dream Ticket, in my opinion, is Hatronade. This card states return all set spell and trap cards on the field to the hand. Semi-limit card right here. Honestly, if you're going to rock Hatronade, sometimes rocking two copies of Hatronade is usually the best. This card works extremely well in OTK uh, decks where they can combo really well with only three cards. For example, there was a very popular Vision Hero deck list that was in the KC Cup, and since Vylon wasn't on the semi-limit list, everybody used Hatronade and three copies of Vylon and just OTK'd everybody with heroes, and that's why that deck was actually kind of meta for a little bit. So Hatronade, extremely powerful card, definitely pretty good. I still think that cards like Cosmic Cyclone is better than Hatronade, but if you build your deck right, Hatronade can be a very beneficial card because it just returns all set spell and trap cards on the field to the hand, so really nice. Another card that I think is really good that you can spend your SR Dream Ticket on is Forbidden Chalice if you have no copies of this card. This is a quick play spell that you can target one face of monster on the field until the end of the turn that target gains four in attack but its effects are negated. In certain situations Chalice can be very beneficial if you play the card correctly. Now this is not going to get you wins in every duel and I still think that TTH and Hatred is better than Forbidden Chalice but Forbidden Chalice when used correctly can definitely give you the upper hand in certain duels and if you do play it correctly it's very versatile because in some situations maybe you don't care that your monster um, will have its effects negated and you need that extra 400 attack to win the duel. You can pop Chalice on your own monster and go from there. If your opponent summons a very powerful monster that you don't want to uh, allow them to combo with, you can give your opponent's monster Forbidden Chalice. Sure, they gain 400 attack, but the effect is negated, which could potentially stop combos. So Forbidden Chalice, when used correctly, can be very good. Now, this actually wasn't part of my script or my list of cards to recommend in today's video, but I'm glad that I remembered it now because Fire Formation Grioku can be pretty spicy when used correctly. Now, I'll be honest, this card has not seen play whatsoever recently 
recently, but I Smith, you never know when one we get more Fire Fist support or just Beast Warrior type support in Yu Gi Oh! Duel Links. And also, this card is really good because of the fact that you can target one set spell and trap card your opponent controls. Your opponent cannot activate the targeted card in response to the card's activation. While this card fa face up on the field, that set card cannot be activated. So, as you guys can tell, it's pretty spicy. I still think that Night Beam is probably a better version of Fire Formation in most situations, which is why this card hasn't been used, but still. You never know when Beast Warriors get some spicy support and you need to lock down your opponent's back row. And with Night Beam, it destroys your opponent's back row, while with this one, it locks it so your opponent can't swap out that back row if they wanted to. So definitely something to consider, maybe for the future. Another card that's really powerful, which is why it's on the semi-limitless, is Concentrating Current. You can target one face-up monster you control. It gains attack equal to its current defense till the end of this turn. Other monsters you control cannot attack during the turn you activate this card. This card's really good because you get to make your monsters have so much attack depending if they have a lot of defense. This helps so many decks be able to do some cheese OTKs, which is really cool, which is why it's on the semi-limitless. And it doesn't work well in every single deck, but the decks that it does work well with it's very devastating, that's for sure. This card is super good in Cyber Dragons, and Cyber Dragons with this card can do some spicy stuff, which is why this is on the semi-limit list. So Concentrating Current can be in, in a multitude of decks, but in certain decks, it's very, very powerful. Now, I'm just going to be recommending Wall of Disruption because just shout out to one of the OG cards in this game. Now, Wall of Disruption does not see that much play anymore because it's a non-reactable trap card, but sometimes when your opponent's least expecting it, Wall of Disruption can come through. We are in a meta where a lot of monsters can get spammed out, so maybe Wall of Disruption could give you the upper hand at certain duels. This card is definitely good in early on in ranked PvP, but don't expect this card to do a lot of work in Platinum and Legend. But you never know. You never know when you can switch up your opponent with Wall of Disruption and just be like, bruh, and give them a bruh moment. So that's why I'm recommending it out of principle. I would definitely go for some of the other cards I mentioned already in today's video, but Wall of Disruption is an okay pick. Another card that's kind of cool is Bad Aim. When an opponent's card or effect is activated, target one card in the field other than that card and destroy it. I've seen Bad Aim here and there in recent decks in the game, and this card is kind of neat for the fact that you can blow up some of your opponent's cards when they activate effects, so you can potentially shut down combos like some decks utilize the field spell. You can use Bad Aim when your opponent's monster activates an effect and pop the field spell, which could be pretty good. And there's also just so many other situations where Bad Aim could be useful. I still think the other cards are better um, that I listed in today's video but bad aim can be pretty good depending on what deck that you play and the decks that you go against bad aim is like seen here and there that's for sure in the game and if you have all the other cards already listed you can consider getting bad aim or i guess multiple copies of bad aim because this card is actually in one of the structure decks in Yu Gi Oh Duel links the dragoonity uh structure deck so you can get like a second copy of this and then pick up the structure deck and get a guaranteed one of bad aim so up to you here's another card that was not on my list but i'm still going to recommend it anyways network trap hole when your opponent special summons a monster from the main deck or graveyard banish it face down now this card is not useful right now but this is definitely one of those cards where depending in a future meta you never know in a future meta where konami releases a deck that is just busted that can special summon from the graveyard and main deck and maybe you can utilize network crackle to really shut them down because this is a banish it face down so your opponent's monster if they even have effects that can trigger when it's banished it won't matter because it's banished face down so honestly network trap pull can be spicy not right now but could be super spicy in the future depending on what they release. So maybe you can save your um, SR Dream Ticket and if that time comes, get a copy Network Trap Hole. One card that's been very interesting that I've noticed some people play is Void Trap Hole. When your opponent special summons a monster with 2,000 or more attack, negate the effects of one of those monsters with 2,000 more attack and if you do, destroy it. This card can shut down some decks. I hate it when I summon Chaos Dragon Leviathan and Void Trap Hole just yeets that boy. He just gets rid of it and it makes me really sad. So Void Trap Hole can be pretty good, especially when your opponent plays a lot of decks that have really strong monsters. So now, one card I'm going to recommend is Zing Zang Hu. This card is interesting because you can activate this by selecting two set spell or trap cards on the field. The selected spell or trap cards cannot be activated. Now, this card doesn't see that much play anymore because we do have very powerful uh, spell cards in the game that can remove back row very easily. And if your opponent has Cosmic Cyclone and they get rid of this thing, it's just going to be useless because then they can activate their back row again. But in the situation where you go turn one, set Zing Zang Hu, your opponent goes, uh, you know, turn two, set two cards, lock them out right away. They can't do anything for that turn. It could be pretty spicy, especially if you lock down a couple of their Cosmic Cyclones and they can't even activate those ones. So there you go right there. But yeah, if your opponent has like um, a Cosmic Cyclone in hand, they can activate a Zing Zang Hu or they can activate Cosmic Cyclone, target Zing Zang Hu, and then it's useless. So May, it's kind of good, but kind of not. It's it's an outdated card, but I'm still going to recommend it because it is an old card, and one used right could be very beneficial for you. 
Another card that I could recommend is Super Rush Headlong. You can target a face of monster you control and declare one attribute. If the target battles an opponent's monster with the attribute this turn, destroy that opponent's monster at the start of the damage step. This is a quick play spell card, so if you use correctly, you can easily destroy some of your opponent's monster, either you attacking into them or they attacking into you. Um, this card most of you guys probably do have this card, but I still wanted to give a mention to Super Rush Headlong because it hasn't seen that much play in this current meta, but I still think that it is a all right card to recommend. But yeah, just keep in mind that a lot, not a lot of people play this card anymore, but who knows, maybe you can surprise your opponent by trying this card out and switching things up. And then the last like super generic card that's pretty powerful is Offerings to the Doom. It's a quick play spell card that states target one face up monster on the field, destroy the target, also skip your next drop phase. This card is not good right now, but in by the off chance there is future meta decks in the game that has super powerful powerful searchability. Offerings to the Doom can be pretty deadly. I used this in Six Samurais for a little bit, and sometimes it did some work because Six Sam's um, pre ban list used to be able to search and thin out the deck like crazy, and just Offerings to the Doom just blow things up. And sure, you're skipping your draw phase, but you're still going to have the opportunity to still draw into cards later. It was absolutely ridiculous. So this card hasn't seen much play at all or like little to no play at all. But if there's a deck out there, especially if it comes into Duel Links, that is just super stupid when it comes to searching for stuff, Offering to the Doom could be pretty interesting. Now for this segment of the video, I'm going to recommend you guys a bunch of cards from the extra deck that you could get utilizing your SR Dream Ticket. And the first card I want to shout out is Fortune Lady Every. This card is extremely powerful for Light Swarms and for Fortune Ladies. It's a 7 star light synchro monster that requires a 1 tuner plus 1 or more non tuner spellcaster monsters. This card's attack and defense become its level times 400, so when you synchro someone into this card, it becomes a 2800 attack and defense monster. Once per turn during your standby phase, you can increase this card's level by 1, so throughout the duel, if it stays on the field, you gain uh, 400 attack, which is really nice. Um, and also, uh, when that happens, you can also banish one face of monster opponent controls, and that's why this card is so powerful, because it gains attack if it stayed on the field, and on top of that, you get to banish one of your opponent's monsters, and it doesn't target either, so it's so, so good. Also, what's really good about this card is that during your opponent's end phase, if this is in the graveyard, you can banish a spellcaster-type monster and summon this card back for free. Well, you still gotta sacrifice the uh, spellcaster monster, but yeah, you just get the synchro monster back in the field super quickly, and since you did synchro summon with a spellcaster anyways, if your opponent didn't to banish that spellcaster that you just synchroed with then i guess you do kind of get this card for free so super powerful card really good card and probably one of the best ones i would recommend with this sr dream ticket because you only need one copy of every anyways another card that i think is really good that you can get with your sr dream ticket is hts uh Psy behemoth this card is a generic six star synchro monster and after damage calculation when this card battles opponent's monster you can banish that monster and banish this card really powerful card so another card that i would recommend with your sr dream ticket that you could get is powered insectron this card is a really good six star synchro monster that states when this card is synchro summoned this turn this card cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects also you take no damage so just in general that's already pretty good or if you combo this with Crystrons, or if you combo this card with Crystrons, Crystrons can synchro summon into this card during your opponent's turn. So then when you synchro summon into this monster with Crystrons, you take no battle damage on your opponent's turn. So if they attack into you, it's not gonna do anything. And this guy stays in the field, so pretty good card. If you guys play Blue Eyes White Dragon, Azura Eyes Silver Dragon is a pretty cool card. Super powerful for Blue Eyes White Dragon, so I'd recommend. Another really powerful synchro monster you can get with your um, SR Dream Ticket is White Aura Dolphin. It's a generic six star synchro monster that's used a lot in water decks and SSA decks so if you guys are playing water decks and you have ways to synchro summon rock this card another extra deck card I would recommend with your SR dream ticket is Stardust Charge Warrior this is a generic six star synchro monster and when this card is synchro summoned you can draw one card also this card can attack all special summon monsters your opponent control once each and while it only has 2000 attack if you combo it with some of the other cards in the game like the psychic wielder and psychic tracker cards you can uh, pop a monster with psychic wielder and then gain 600 attack with trackers so definitely a pretty good card especially common with those ones another card that's all right is dark and dragon it's an eight star dark synchro monster it takes one tuner plus one or more non-tuner dark monsters and once per turn you can target a monster opponent controls this card loses 500 attack and defense but you send that target to the graveyard so it's an all right card now for the rest of this video i'm just going to go super rapid fire on the rest of these recommendations these recommendations are a bunch of cards that just boost up certain decks in the game and i just wanted to give them a quick mention if you are a free-to-play player and just refuse to spend any money on Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, I would not mind recommending uh, Neo's Fusion 
Fusion and Red Eyes Fusion because these are both very powerful Fusion cards. Now they are from Structure Decks and you can buy the Structure Deck once for free of course, but if you want extra copies of them, you need to spend money. And if you refuse to spend money on this game, go for it. I mean, you can utilize your SR Dream Ticket to get Indios Fusion and then just get the other one for free by spending gems. And then you can easily summon into your Brave Neo. So there you go right there. And then kind of the same principle for Red Eyes Fusion, but with Red Eyes Fusion, I don't think is as good as Neos Fusion. I think Neos Fusion is really good right now, especially with the new hero structure that came out recently. But yeah, I'd recommend both of these if you just refuse to spend any money in Duel Links. Palace of the Elemental Lords is a very powerful card for this deck, so I could recommend that. Rev Dread Origin is very good for Vendreds. It's a powerful ritual spell card that you can utilize to uh, ritual summon it into any of your Vendred monsters. And this card gives your Vendred monsters immunity, so I'd go for it if you're building that deck. Diamond Core of the Kwaku Maru is a very powerful card for Kwaku Maru because you can search out for just any of your Kwaku Marus, which is just insane. Now, the deck has not seen that much play recently, but I don't know why. I just have a feeling that this deck might come back. Destruction Swordsman Fusion is a very powerful card because it allows you to summon into your Buster Blader the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman, utilizing your opponent's monsters and a Buster Blader. And utilizing this against a Dragon deck can be very beneficial. And there's a good amount of Dragon decks in the game, so you go for it if you're playing Buster Blader. Backup Rider is a cool card because you can target to face a monster on the field. It gains 1500 attack until the end of the turn. Also, shout out to Rush Relinquency, which you can target to face a monster on the field and gain 700 attack until the end of the turn. Now, these cards are both versatile and a lot. Of different decks but i'm only recommending them in this segment of the video because they are kind of decent in cyber dragons since concentrating current is on the semi limit list you can rock these cards instead to give your simmer tech um dragon not your simmer tech over dragon i'm gonna pop it up on screen if i remember to edit it in because i forgot the fusion monsters name but the one that's being used a lot in cyber dragons if that card gets a little boost you can really help yourself out on getting over your opponent's big boss monsters and just repeatedly attacking to them so it's really good in that deck specifically vampire kingdom is a cool card because all Zombie monsters gain five and attack during damage calculation only, and also this card just works really well in the vampire deck. And vampires have been pretty meta, um, or have been a meta deck in the past, and they could be a threat if you're not prepared for them. So there you go, if you want to build a zombie or vampire deck. Spellbook and Secrets is a card that I could recommend because if you don't have three copies of this card, you definitely want to try to get three copies of this card if you're going to consider spellbooks at all. Also, there's been rumors that we might get spellbook support very soon in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, and if you don't got three uh, spellbook and secrets but really want to play spellbooks, maybe now's the time to get that third one. Mass Change is a very very good card especially right now because we got some new mass change support so if you want to get some extra copies of mass chain with your actual dream ticket and don't want to waste any money or gems there you go painful decision is an interesting card it's not really used in any meta deck right now but basically what you can do is you can send a level four lower normal monster for deck to the graveyard and if you do add one card of the same name as a card to your deck to your hand if you play certain decks you can probably go for some interesting combos utilizing this card properly this card's seen in a lot of meme decks and whatnot dual wheel is a very 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 powerful card for six samurais and gives six samurais that edge to really mess up your opponent. If you don't have three copies of Subterra Final Battle yet, but you love playing Subterras, I'd recommend using your SR Dream Ticket on this because this card really makes Subterras a good deck. Sea Stealth Attack is a very powerful card for water decks because Sea Stealth Attack just gives your water monsters so many good abilities. If you don't got three copies of Sea Stealth Attack and want to get it, feel free to go for it. Now, when it comes to the monsters, if you're trying to build a Shirani deck, both of these cards are good for the archetype. Maybe if I wanted to play this deck, I can get a third copy of Squire. Squire is pretty good, comboed with like Gold Sarcophagus and whatnot. So there's a couple options right there. Shout out to the homie Light Pulsar Dragon. Very good in light and dark decks. I utilized it in my Levioneer deck. And this card really promotes some spicy text with Eclipse Wyvern and Chaos Dragon Levioneer. So cool card right there. Keeper the Dragon Magic is from a structure deck. But if you want multiple copies of this and don't want to waste money on the structure deck, Keeper Dragon Magic is really good. You can discard a card an optimization or a fusion normal spell card from your deck to your hand so could consider that pretty cool shout out to the best waifu misty treadwell this card clearly inspired by her but yeah shout out to misty here's another vendred card that you could utilize in your vendred deck so maybe you want to consider your sr dream ticket on that um shout out to christians if you need to get third copies of your christian cards here's a couple options right there if you guys play magnets getting three copies of alpha and gamma is really good because it really boosts the consistency of the deck if you play sub and don't have a third copy of sub behemoth and you for some reason have three copies of final battle maybe you want to get a third copy of behemoth because this card's really powerful Cockle Doodle Doo is not used in any meta decks right now, but I still like this tuner monster because it's a special summonable tuner monster that allows you access into a 
lot of synchro plays. Uh, for me personally, I like comboing this card with four star monsters to go into uh, seven star and eight star um, synchro summons. Now, Dark Lords don't really see any meta right now, but if by the off chance you want to play Dark Lords, there's a lot of options right here. Now, Raikou isn't really used in every single Light Sworn deck, but Raikou can be pretty spicy in certain situations. So if you need that just one copy of Raikou for your Light Sworn deck and don't want to dig into the old box, there you go. You can use your SR Dream Ticket. Elemental Hero Solid Soldier is a really cool um, Elemental Hero monster. When normal summon, you can special summon a level four lower hero monster from your hand. Also, if this card is sent from the monster zone to the graveyard by a spell effect, you can bring back a hero monster from a graveyard and summon it into defense position. So spicy card. If you refuse to spend any money in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links and want to get a third copy of Dragon Spirit of White, you could do that utilizing the SR Dream Ticket. That card is in here. Now, Geminis are not meta, but they hold a special place in my heart. And I gotta say the best Gemini monster in the game is definitely Dark Valkyria. So if you want to play Geminis, hey, there you go. Shout out to the other Gemini right here, Evo. Evo's not as good as Dark Valkyria, but like I said, Geminis are very cool. So there you go. Build that Gemini deck. Like I said earlier in today's video with the Spellbook of Secrets, maybe you want to get Spellbook Magician of Prophecy to build that Spellbook deck because there's been rumors that we might be getting some more Spellbook support very soon. If you play Sea Stealth Attack, Citadel Well is a great card to utilize with Sea Stealth Attack because both of these cards work hand in hand. I hate this card with a passion, but it's still a very powerful card. And if you're playing Crystrons and you need another copy of Citadel Well and you don't want to waste more money or gems on your Crystron deck, you can snag a copy of this. Dawn Knight was used a little bit in Blue Eyes White Dragon. You can, um, when this card is sent from the field to graveyard, you can send a light monster from a deck to the graveyard. And maybe in the future, this card can see some other play besides being used in Blue Eyes White Dragon. Now, for my final pick of today's video, I gotta recommend Jerry Beans Man. It's a very powerful card that can get over any 1700 attack monsters because he has 50 more uh, attack points than those 1700 attack monsters. So it can defeat Activator, which is crazy to think about. This card is a very strong level 3 plant earth monster and since it's a plant it can synergize very well in arrow mages this card is crazy because it's a bean soldier that believes he's the strongest warrior in the world and the crazy part is his true abilities are still untested so this guy can evolve into something that we don't even know yet so maybe you'd be the one that can find it well, that's going to be it for my recommendations of what you guys can utilize your SR Dream Ticket on. Let me know in the comment section down below if I missed out on any cards that you personally think is really good with the SR Dream Ticket. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. If this video was helpful to you guys at all, be sure to hit the like button in the video down below and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more Duel Links content. Other than that, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll go see you guys next Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video. Peace out, everybody.